Okay. What's a CAT you hun? Can you guys hear out there? Go see you, hon. You're okay, hi, T. Oh, okay, okay. That's all I need to know. Okay, so anybody got any language-related thoughts, questions? Uh, I'll give you my general plan is to do some more of the, the little readings, keep looking up new sort of verbs that are being used in here, go through a bit of a short time lesson and how to read a verb and learn how to use that stuff. Then back to conjugations. Before we do that, any thoughts or questions? How would you say "kibet uh, kainach" does the language preservation? So language preservation. Uh, well, here let's actually let's listen to one of my favorite people because Kagwask uh, and I were talking. With Kashkawu, Kashkawu tin aya Kagwaska Khatka Shteutin. Do in aya you how to how to say atka? Ye awe Hestasa awe Sawa ach to cook awe kunach yenik. Ya cook a kahaya how to say hithoa Kagwask a kewu woos. Data tina saya tiko a yi datling gitch to a two ah. A kayata a yahi haina kawanik. Um, anybody want to translate any of that for me or all of it or parts of it? Ina Kawanik was, uh, he told us. Oh. So Kawanik is to tell, he or she told. So we were working with him, and uh, I was with Ishmael Hope, and he couldn't really hear anything, so we had to write everything down. We got him to tell these stories, and we recorded it. And Shteotin, Kathy Reddy was there. And then Ishmael thought to ask him, what do learners of Clinket need to hear? And this is what he shared with us. And so I thought of this one, thinking of uh, preservation. So. It was at Sea Alaska Heritage. When I Ach, 
So that part of the end, uh, let Klinkit exist forever. And then there's a, there's a couple parts in there that I gotta update. There's a part where he's saying, I throw my voice up, but he's actually saying, my head raises up, and there was a couple other uh, mistakes in there. Uh, and then uh, while we're kind of on that realm here's another uh, speaker I asked her the same question and some of these videos have subtitles. Uh, some of not, most of them don't, but some of them do. When a spoon caught it through and a hot taste, it took you, 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 to hop on a hustaki with it. Um, come on, um, my tear away to play his hop on a was neat. Google, I think it, um, 
Tekpak Gedeng Tekpak Gedeng Gedeng Tekpak Gedeng Mampas Ajawe Kwe An Kak Tu Ye Ye Kuyati ที่ก็ที่เกี่ยวกับอาจารย์ทักเขาอีที่นักขายที่ยินดีด้วยชิบูก็ฟังดิจิทัลอามาเซอร์อืมยูกับดิบิเอตจะน่ารักอ้าว
שאחו ארץ עיר גובל קר, שהאין קדוש נקרא, אי אחו ארץ, שאי גובל כחסי גוף. שם פה אי נעקק חניק, יש דת שקשניק. סינגיטר, יש דת שקשניק. ‫שדעשו שבתי לה, יש דעת שקדשניק. ‫עד זה ינח הכחניק, ‫יש לך פנוק. ‫כן, גאי יואב, יש. ‫הוכחה אתך, ‫הנה היה אטורקות. ‫אטורקות, אטורקות. ‫דעשה כאוטיץ'. ‫כדל ביח, אליון החולד ‫הקודלגי פנום. ‫איסור המסיתי נוחת כור, ‫אין לך שום סישור. ‫יש חודד עדיין אותו דרך. ‫מה היו? ‫חסקי דסוק שאח עדת פסקי דוח עדת. ‫אז אני רואה את הנזס פעם. 
the door. You just don't hold. Yes, it's a it's a do good. That's it's a couple unshared in him. It's a couple of over there, so I inch cut me got it. Other than two and a half second, the other is she go here. The canoe which are our cash can nick the who jet, the who jet, ah, ah. Yes, poor, yeah, ah, yeah, thank you. Ah, can I say that? A yahoo, a day inch cut nick here. You need a heck of a canoe. I tell a new question, I do your papa tell me, yes, to do the accounts to care. Okay. So those, those recordings are out there. They're on YouTube. You find them uh, very good. And some of them, the subtitles are there. I've got the text for a lot of them that you can use to sort of look at and figure out kind of how it's working. There's some errors i got to go fix. Anyone else got any thoughts or questions, language stuff? Okay. I did hear him say Tum Dan Tan, or he thought. Yeah. I think before I heard Tum Dan Tan. Yeah, well, okay, so Tum Dan Tan would be his or her thoughts. Um. So like, you Khatangi, you to Tunk, so to Tan. So when he says you to de tan, he or she thought that way, like you ewatan. But in certain, not all of them, but in a lot of cases, the perfective in Tessa will become an M. So that's why I'd say tum de tan. And then there's another thing. Dasawe kaikak inachyata, kheishk yachyati. Dasawe kaikak inach. What's that? It's like blue. Yeah, it's blue, right? So yachety. That's how we like Go back and review our colors again. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, what? It's green. In Teslin, they say sum yachyeti, and that's blue. I don't know. I don't know why. The first part it makes sense because, like, there's a thing a drum group will say, "Gusu wegao." Where's the drum? And in Teslin, they may say, "Gusu wegam," and they have gum dan. So these are just some things. Just they're dialect things. Uh, there's a few others that we could sort of look at. But yeah. Uh, so you might say on the coast, to de ton? Yeah, you, yeah. Oh. To de ton. He, he or she thought it. Um, and so if we go to our. Our verbs. We go down to ton, and in ton we're going to get think, uh, and so to think about something, to change one's mind. Uh, so in this case, you could say uh, a da you to a tunk. She he is thinking about it right now, and the a uh, could change to anything. Uh, he is thinking about me. Uh, she's thinking about a dog. And then the perfective would be tuwatan. You tuwatan. And you might say you. In that case, that one would probably stay. But he said ditan, right? So let's find that one. It's a little bit different. With a D, right? So 
So here is the, and it's a little different. So this is to, to think a certain way. So you could say, ye tuch, ye That's what I thought. That's how I thought. Ye tu detan. But in this case, that W would become an M in Tessin. Ye tum detan. That's how she or he thought. So we're kind of describing something, and we might sort of say, uh, they saw this bird and they thought it was this kind of bird, but then it turned out to be this other kind of bird. Like, uh, you might say, uh, so he thought it was a whatever I said, right, blue jay or whatever. But then we got close and we saw it was something else. So ye tu detan. And then that's like and and you're really talking about the way someone was thinking about something, because there's a related verb if we want to talk about sort of uh, speculation which is an important concept in, in languages to kind of take a guess at something and that would be uh, this one ye ji or ye ji like you know this could be uh, someone's asking you how to say something oyster catcher ye ji Shugan. Like, I, I, I believe this is what it is. I think that's what it is. Uh, and this is kind of leaning into some speculation. Like, we might say, and none of us have a clock or whatever. And so someone might say, and I might say, I think it might be later than that. I think it might be earlier than that. And I'm really just saying, I think it's more, I think it's less. And so that's how you do some of that. Speculating is important. Gwash is another thing. I notice I say that a lot because I walk around with my, my son. And what did, I, what did I say? He asked if he could do something. I said, Gwash. Like, and he said, Gwash, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yehwaji. So here's where we left off on these little readings chopping firewood, building fires. So I need someone to read and to help translate this one. Who wants to go first? Okay, can it cheesh? And everybody repeat after me. Ach de chan ayu. Ach de chan ayu. Ach de chan ayu. Ach de chan when we have this, the K and then the verb, with starting with the AW, they're going to K, oops, I ran them together, didn't I? K out the tech, sorry. Everybody say K out the tech. K out the tech. K out the tech. K out the tech. Ah, Do I have, uh, who was my reader for that? Do you want to translate that for us? What you can? So that is my grandson or gran granddaughter over there. Yeah, well, any thoughts on the second part? Eat it a shit. Okay, anybody? Uh, 
Two king salmon. Two king salmon. K out the tech. Yeah, so out it, and so the teich part, uh, we might recognize from us teich, which is for fishing. Uh, in this case, we'll we'll go find it. So we'll go down to. Whenever you use it, it's always good to close your route so it's easier to navigate. And here's teich, to fish or to hook to troll. And so a lot of times this is the, f the form that we know it in, asteich, for fishing. But once we see it as a verb, we start to move it around. And when we go into the perfective, we'll see the z classifier, which we often don't even, you know, but once we start learning more and more about verbs, we start seeing, oh, that looks like a verb. Oh, that's an s classifier. That means it's probably s plus d. So we're going to expect outzitech, um, which they have it short and high. It's probably long and low. These are just some things we understand a little bit more. Uh, and not to say that any, anyone was wrong, but it's just we've learned a little bit more about writing it and, and how, how the vowels sort of change in these predictable patterns. And so now we can get all these other things like agachtustech, uh, we're going to go fishing. Out to the we went fishing. Kesh out to we didn't go fishing. So it's sort of getting some of the rules, but now coming back into this list and learning to use these things uh, in this context. And then this is so the way that we we've usually heard it is like it's happening right now. Good night, Chish. He caught two king salmon. Yeah, oh well. Who wants to go next? Cook day, somebody. Cook. Cook. Do ke wu. Okay. What do we recognize? Yakde is toward the boat. To the boat. The boat. Uh, uh, dasa is not there. Kestasa is nothing. nothing. Anybody know about the du Kewu part? Yisuku He's saying. Uh, he's out Kewu would be he's saying. So that you were right on the money with that. So we can go back and we see uh, it's a very similar verb. So we see asteich and out but then we, when we go up to qaywu, uh, which is a verb root, then we'll see a lot of the similar. So as qaywu, he or she is saying. Aud ze qaywu, he or she saying. And same thing. And so basically, we're fished with a net. So that qaywu part is a, actually a noun. Yeah, his saying, absolutely. His net. Uh, it could be also a spider web's web. So it's a web, a net. Qaywu. Do qaywu ya kute ya anna yish. So the yish part, we'll go into our uh, verb dictionary to find that one. So here's the y. Yish is to pull a fairly light object. So, in this case, we're in, these are some subtle differences. So he's not pulling it up. That's kind of a different verb. He's just pulling the net towards his boat. Keshdasa, awushat. Anybody know the awushat verb? 
This is a negative form, right? He didn't get any. Yeah, he didn't catch any. So again, so we go find the shot verb. We're kind of moving back and forth between our sources. But we go down and we see shot. That's a zero classifier. And so we see I was shot. He or she caught it. Catch I was shot. He or she didn't catch it. So this would be like to catch a ball, to, to catch a fish. It, it just means to grab it, to hold it. So it works in a similar way as English. In the English phrase, you know, when you catch a fish, you're not literally, you're not catching it in the way you would catch a ball, but it's still used the same way in Clinkett. He is bringing his seine aboard. He didn't catch anything. He shot. Okay. Who wants to go now? I'll go good. Okay, good. Do gewu kau dis ech a kech. Goodness, cheese. Uh, so everybody repeat after me. Do kay wu kau dis et. Oops, do kay wu kau dis et. Do kay wu kau dis et. A kech. A kech. Okay. And what can you translate for us? Anahuk. Um, she's pulling up something, something, and I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. Anybody know either? Of, there's two verbs here. One of them is a little tricky. Uh, one of them might be kind of new. You see, who gets aged? Uh, H H is salty. That's a good. Uh, it's a good ear. But and so, and well, so when we look at this, the d. Once we we see that cow d, we should know that the, that's the classifier right there, the d i, and that the verb root starts with the next thing. So we have the s apostrophe, and so we're gonna look up s H. So we'll go here. And here it is, to tear, to rip up, to burst, to peel, to tear away. So if you're, you know, we had this, we're telling these kids, uh, tear, the, tear the pages apart. Uh, this could also be used uh, in, in sort of metaphorically to like rip something out of somebody's hands. Uh, this one, could also mean like sexual assault. So you gotta be a little bit careful with it. But most of the time it does mean just to tear something. Um, so, cow did say it. Oh, so we're looking for this one. So it tore, right? So that's how we would translate that. Like his, his net tore. And so, what do you do with a torn net? Mend it. You mend it. And the way you mend uh, a net is usually the verb you're going to use is for sewing. Mm -hmm. And the sewing here, a cake. I don't know if we're going to be able to find that one um, in, in that particular form. Anybody know what the verb root would be for that? Because it's not cake. Is it egg? Uh, no, the, the underlying K has to stay on there. But what's going to... So, yeah, Would it be kuch? Yeah, so it's going to be in... What, what we've got here is an open root with a suffix on it. They change their shapes. The double A goes to an E-I. The double O usually goes to a W-E-I. Right? And so... And this it's tricky at first, but the, the reality is you learn some of these rules, but then you just 
there's some of these verb roots that are pretty common. Ka is one of them. Uh, and, and in this case, there's two different types of verb roots. There's one which is to sort of talk or to say. And then there's one which is to sew or to tattoo. And it's this one, to sew. Mm. Uh, but there's a, relate, there's a different one, too, which is to gamble. Uh, so alqa dakahiti is the bingo hall. Alqa khuku is the the pull tabs or the rippies. What do you, what are they called? Pull tabs. Pull tabs. I call them rippies. Everyone's like, what? What is that? Um, and so if we look for a I don't know if we're going to find it. And I'll explain what's generally going on there. So we go to ka, and we go to and we see embroider, sew on it, to sew it, tattoo it, and to sew. So this is the one we're looking for. And we see aqeq. But the aqeq is not in there. And so really we've got, there's multiple types of repetitive suffixes and they have subtle differences. The S apostrophe means you're sewing in a pattern. And usually the pattern is repeating itself. And sewing is a really good verb to think of that, because it's like this stitch, this stitch, this stitch, this stitch. But once you get into a bigger kind of a thing, like a net, which isn't really like sewing little tight patterns, it, it gets this which is more of just, it's just a slightly different repetitive process. So that's a long explanation for sewing the net. Mending the net, however you want to say it. And the verb root was ku. Ka. 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 And so, gasa uh, ikes. What are you sewing? If you were doing it right now, uh, and so we can come back to this. That's usually how we see it used, is uh, in in this particular form. Uh, and so, dasa. Dasa iyaka, what did you sew? Khwaka, I sewed. Khakaitz, I'm sewing right now. Right? And so this is to sew something specific, right? And so this is when there's the it on there. Uh, and then it's a pretty fun verb. It's one that we, we use probably quite a bit. Another one that we might use is uh, this one, which would be to sew beads onto something. So they are different, and so this is why you get the ka on here, because it's going onto something. Whereas the first one would be like, I'm sewing uh, a shirt. I'm sewing a shirt. You know, it's not like I'm sewing something onto something. So beading and, and embroidering, embroidering, you get the same verb. Okay, okay. You did qa, I do sa. Who didn't go yet? Who? Ka, ka, sway, kutis. Do ish, ka, away, kutis. You came. Everybody, dot, ka, sway, kutis. Dot, ka, sway, kutis. Do ish, ka, away, kutis. Do ish, ka, away, kutis. Okay. You just need to figure out that one verb, then you should have the whole thing. Do you know that verb? Something like what are you looking out for? Yeah, right? What are you what are you looking for? And so here's T's. So that's what we should look up. Uh, and so here's T. And we get to T's to stare at steadily, to look out for, to keep a watch for. Uh, to inspect, to look around. So, you know, in this case with the qa, and so we see the qa right there. So this is where something like, if there's some information before the verb, then it has this kind of special meaning. And so, uh, like for example, if I'm going to sit up in a tree and I'm going to look for a deer that I might maybe shoot, I'm looking for, I'm and you know, I'm looking for that. And there's a number of different ways to talk about looking for things. And this is one of the most common ways. 
And then there's a there's a couple of nouns that are built off of it as well. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it's gonna play nice. So binoculars are one. Uh, so and then sometimes we see these big words. We're like, well, it's a really big word, but we'll see that this is tunach through it. Kudetis. What kudetis? K is that built-in verb uh, prefix, which means a given space. D is somebody does it. Tis. So people look for things through it, right? And it's also called tsiksh which is uh, a plant called false hellebore. It's very poisonous, but that they used to use a long time ago for looking through, right? You would look through things. Oh, so what is he or she looking for? He's looking for his father. Everybody else not go yet? I did say yeah. At was eat. Ach, cake, cake away. Cheesh. Any parts of that you can translate? Who is that over there? Um, rowing it? My nephew there. Okay. Uh, so let's all say this. Adusaya atwushit. Adusayu atwushit. Ach kelk awa. Ach kelk awa. So we're going to look up this chlit. So chlit is the verb root we should be looking for. Uh, just to double check that one. And so it's, it's a pretty interesting use. I, I don't really hear this one that much. So it's, they're, they're, they're gliding along, like they must be going at a really good clip. Because there's a, there's a couple different ways to talk about paddling and traveling and going. Because we're, we're water people, we're ocean people. We got a bunch of different ways to talk about going in a boat. So, so you could say, adu uh, sayu. Who is that going along by boat? Uh, let's just. Who is that going along by boat? Who is that going Then there's another <clears throat> way to go around uh, in a boat. And, it, and so, is just general, they're in a boat and the boat is going. It could be motorized, it could be paddling, it could be drifting. Um, they're just in the boat going along. And then there's uh, this one to paddle. So who is uh, paddling along? And then this one you would say, Adu Sayu. Oh. Yeah, so Acha is a paddle. And so it's built, it's built off of this verb root. Acha is to row, but this would be rowing, and this would be the appropriate verb because they're rowing with two hands, and that's like in a rowboat, that's kind of what you do. Uh, or if there's people on both sides of the canoe and you're all going, that is acha, right? And so, but it's a little bit different uh, if you're paddling by yourself because it's just a slightly different type of thing. I don't know if they've got it in here. And so for Klinkit, the, the reason why it starts to sort of differentiate between things is because it's sort of like, it's telling you what type of thing you're gonna have to do. And so teek, eek is to paddle yourself. You gotta paddle on each side of the boat. It's just a little bit different method of, uh, traveling. And so usually you're going uh, alone. And then here it is with someone else, right? But it would be 
acha if it was a rowboat with one on both sides. It's just kind of an interesting thing. But then wuhlit, uh, that might be the only time I ever remember seeing that one. So who is that rowing around? That is my nephew. Uh, translation <laughs> so we we should get the dance away in the each part oh cook what is that your father Kleshkosaku mm, Akwa un to shoot Akwa Kleshkosaku? Yeah, yeah, well, and it's very, it's very good because we know uh, una is a gun, so we should know un is the verb root to shoot, but then and so. But we get the akwa. So when we see akwa, um, it's future, right? This might be a time. This might be time for a dumb joke. So hold, hold on one second while I pull this one up. Let's see if we can find it. So when we think about these future forms and starting to recognize them in the uh, in the prefix then there's just certain things we learn to start kind of looking for. Uh, oh, I guess I'm like... So I made this. Little, I was making this little meme. I guess I never finished it. That's why nobody laughed at it. So it's Aquaman, and it says he's going to do something to someone, because that Aqua is a uh, prefix for like he or she is going to, and then to do something to someone. So I'll I'll have to put that out there at some future point. So the Aqua. So dasawe akwaun iish. What is your father going to shoot? Sa awe akwaun. He or she is going to shoot a seal. Or he is right. Sorry. What is your father going to shoot? He's going to shoot a seal. So the akwaun is he or she is going to do it to it. Right? Akwa. So how would I say I am going to shoot a seal? So let's check out another uh, resource. Uh, this one's it's a it's a complicated resource, but it's got lots of really good stuff in it. This is the Verbal Structure Handbook uh, by James Crippen. And uh, this is something that came out a few years ago. I was really excited about it. Uh, so basically there's a bunch of general information about Clinkit, dialects and how they're sort of, how to map them out, what Clinkit is related to and how some of the different dialect differentiations between vowels and how that works, uh, the sounds in Clinkit, how nouns generally work, uh, rules on possessive suffixes, some other different suffixes that could go on to nouns, and, and we've looked at some of these, and then they're just here so you can sort of quickly look them up. Uh, some directionals, so we looked at some of these too, up above, to the shore, out to sea. And then a whole bunch of relational nouns, 
There's, and these are probably um, most, if not all of them, these are certainly all of the most common ones. And so we could, you can look at these uh, and start to sort of learn uh, what these things do, like, you know, the point of it, uh, you know, kinak up above, next to, uh, then we get into, uh, so, well, just more dialect stuff. We get into adjectives. Here's all the adjectives. So these ones become, these ones come before the noun. These ones come after the noun. So if you want to learn how to use these, uh, so like sheech, zisk, female moose. Ka, zisk, bull moose. That's how you do that stuff. Uh, and then you could use uh, some of the ones like kate, shan, old dog. Uh, Kate Klein, big dog. Yak Klenk, big boats. Then you get a list of pronouns. And we've learned these, and so here they are in a little handy sort of guide. Uh, transitivity, which is a big concept. This is clinket verb, verbal structure. Here's all the things that might go into a verb. You're not going to have all of them. But here's all the areas where things might pop up. And then uh, here's all the, a bunch of things that could go into those. Uh, more things that could go into some preverbs that affect uh, direct uh, motion verbs. And then uh, we get into a little bit more of dialect stuff. Uh, these are things that can be built into the top of a into the prefix of a noun, more s or a verb, sorry, more stuff built into the, that could be built in the prefix of a verb. We start getting into some pretty complicated stuff like stem variation, which we haven't even really talked about. But in the verb that's saying, is it going to be long and high, long and low, or short and high? Uh, then we get into uh, verb modes. And we've talked about these a little bit. Uh, you know, so we have imperfective, perfective, future. But the big thing that I want to jump ahead to is these charts right here, which are pretty complicated, but once you learn how to read them, they are super useful. So it doesn't include the object. It really just talks about the subject. And we've done some of this stuff. Like, let's say this one says capital C, I. And so what this is giving us is a code. Capital C means a consonant, right? For example, the letter S for C. And we can have khwasaku, I know. Wutusaku, we know. Yisaku, you know. Yisaku, you all know. Wududzaku, it is known. And here we're going to get ausaku he or she knows it. And so then this one shows you what it looks like if you put a thematic prefix on there. For example, to succeed, uh, which would be actually over here. Yach wadlaq. Yaw tu wadlaq. Yi yadlaq. Ya yi dlaq. Yaw du wadlaq. And so this shows you how to start changing that prefix. And it's, you're, kind of a reading, you're kind of reading a code and doing some stuff. But the easiest one to see it is the future. So what we had was we had uh, down here, because this doesn't have an object. So akwa, akwa un. He or she is going to shoot a seal. Sa akwa un. So you could say, for this one, sa kakwa un, I am going to shoot a seal. Sa gaktu un, we are going to shoot a seal. Sa gaki un, you are going to shoot a seal. Sa gaki un, y'all are going to shoot a seal. Sa gaktu un, a seal is going to be shot. So it's kind of a lot of stuff to look at, so, but I just want to let you know it's there. It's, it is useful. We're going to do some other stuff to start looking at 
modes and what happens when we start shifting modes. Um, it's probably a good time for a break and then we'll come back and maybe we'll do one more page and then we'll shift into time and then into conjugations again. And then we'll brainstorm on ideas for our Thursday class. So take five. Cajun when it's Kanach Gachtulsa. Gachtulsa. Right. Uh, Which guys just repeat after me, and then we'll just do the translation together. It might go a little faster. Ach kash aya. Ach kash aya. Eka huin akshet ax. Eka huin akshet ax. Eka huin. Okay, what parts can you guys figure out? Or do you know? Dasa Yisaku. That is my niece. Yeah, what? She's my paternal niece, my clan opposite. Dasa? Eka Queen? That sounds familiar. Parts of it sound familiar, but I don't know. There's a really cool uh, sentence, if I remember it. The flowers bloom in the spring. So is flower, but it really means to flower, right? So that is a, uh, so if we look it up in the verb dictionary, we look for a flower. So this is the verb root to for something to blossom. So ye a kanachwin, it's beginning to flower. Uh anach oops a kau dehwin. Uh, so this needs to be underlined. That, that's one thing that's missing on here is the A part needs to be underlined. Uh, so we get flower, and then we can see what she's doing. So we should know, and we should recognize, even though the verb is a little bit complicated, uh, we should recognize it from chat with the tuck. So chat with the tuck. That's how it's like hak enach. I am wet, right? Or would it tuck? So, we should be able to guess what it is. But if we go looking for it, uh, we're going to go T L apostrophe. And then A A. To wet something by sprinkling, right? So, of course, Clinkit has categories for all of this stuff. And so, um, and then this one means like for the, for the weather to be wet. Uh, you know, and so, hope, hopefully these are exercises that keep pushing us further and further into the resources, right? So we can see would it tuck, and then we see the shit tuck would be to make something wet. Cut it tuck would be for some, the surface of something to be wet, like the table is the surface, the top of the table has water on it maybe. And then to, this is the act of to wet something. So if we want to look up some examples of these, we can go up to the W. And so we've got to think, uh, and we've got to just acknowledge every now and then just how awesome some of these folks are. The, the amount of energy and work that they put into our language, uh, Jillian Story and Constance Nash. And, and I got to have a talk with them on the phone one time, just Jillian. Uh, and, and it was so fun. And, and she said, you can't ask me about Clinkit because I haven't done any work in Clinkit for probably 30 years. 
but I'm happy to talk to you guys. And it was for a Tlingit language class. So 1973 is when this verb dictionary comes out. And it's still it's one of the most useful resources that we have. And, and the way that you use it is by learning the verb roots. And then we saw, so we recognized that root, and we looked it up under ok. And then we saw the underlying word wet, so that sends us back into the English part to go find whatever examples they might have. And so then we see gun wood the tuck. Everybody say gun wood the tuck. Gun wood the tuck. The firewood is wet. So along those lines, we could say cake wood the tuck. And we say douche wood the tuck. So there, and now we see. For this one, to wet something, taka aushetak. Taka aushetak. Taka aushetak. So that's to make that's to make something wet, right? And then we could see to be wet on the surface. We'll do this one in in two parts. Ahwakdanayi. Ahwakdanayi. Cow de tuck. When the dark cow de tuck. When the dark cow de tuck. To make something wet by sprinkling water. So this would include using a watering pitcher because it has kind of the way that the water comes out. And so there's there's different ways to sort of write this. Nowadays we wouldn't have this W right here. We would put on the other side. So K underline K W is I'm going to. I'm going to. Right. Uh, and now we have it's wet outside. So those are all these things. And, and then we got different types of wet under there, but we're not gonna, we're not going there. We've done enough. Okay. And then we get uh, again. We should start recognizing some of these. There's a suffix on there that s apostrophe, because you're doing something in a pattern. And so that's when you end up with the water ring. She's watering the flowers. Ach talk eat what the she. Ach talk eat what the she. Negun to in. Negun to in. Can we translate that one? My auntie. My auntie, my maternal mom's sister. Auntie. Yeah. My and that would be my maternal auntie. We are the <laughs> Yeah, away. So I helped my aunt. We are picking negun, right? negun berries. Or I am helping my aunt. Ach uh, talk eat. What does she? That's interesting. I would expect. Oh, she so probably didn't want to use. This is a little bit more complicated. Ach talk i de ya nachdeshin. Right, okay. So it's probably easier to say I helped, you know. And so it's an interesting sort of decision. Uh, yeah, I'm helping. It's technically I helped my aunt, but it's okay. Uh, we are picking, so tu in. So there's the berry picking. If we want to learn how to use that one, we could find it in this resource as well. We go to in, and we see to pick something into um, a in. So you say tu in, ha in, yi in, yi in, or e in. Sorry, and that's picking berries into a container. Okay. Okay, last one for tonight. We'll do something different. 
Kahwe a Guchlayech ach si. Kahwe a Guchlayech ach si. Kahwe du Kayak eh. Kahwe du Okay, translation. daughter is yeh the verb in there yes yeh is the verb so we go in here for and we look for yeh we go to the y's y-e-e -E, y-e-i and we get to, to build to make to construct And then we get a guchla. So we should also, that's a future form. So we had akqwa, but we'll get a guchla, a guchsa, a guchsha. So what's the translation for that first sentence? Kahwe a guchla yech achsi. My daughter will be Ye awe. Kahwe du chayak e. Yeah, coffee is delicious, or she likes it, right? Achayak a is it's yummy to me. Duchayak a it's yummy to her. Echetigayak a is it yummy to you? And so these kids a little young for coffee, but you know, whatever, whatever, you know. I think I was drinking coffee when I was that age, maybe. Kahwe duchayak a, right? So ach eyak e is a, a way you could tell someone that something is yummy, right? That's delicious. Yak uh, e. Anybody got any thoughts or questions on that? Okay, we'll come back. We'll keep doing those because I think those are they're super useful. There's really useful things in there too. Aguch leyich. She or he is going to make. Something. It could be a, a table, a chair, uh, it could be, a f you know, there's all kinds of stuff. And then, would be, I'm going to. So, we'll start getting into some of those uh, different forms as well. So, I just want to review a little bit some time stuff. Uh, I think we've done a little bit of this before. And then it goes into just continuing to think about these verbs so we can keep looking them up. And when we, as we learn to sort of absorb verbs, we look at a verb and we just, we, there's a bunch of information we've got to kind of categorize so we know how to use that particular verb. But to start with, we've kind of got these senses of time. Uh, so the first one is, and this one's really interesting. So uh, to say now, at this time, or sometimes still, as in like, oh, you're still here? Good job. Uh, yesu. 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 And my theory, which I'm not sure is quite right, but if yesu verb is generally kind of like verbing now, verb yesu is still verbing, right? So you could say yesu uh, achatlech. I'm dancing right now. I'm still dancing. And I, I can't quite figure out. It seems to me that's how it works. It's one of those sort of really fine line concepts that I'm trying to figure out. So to say something happens before, so ahead of something, would be a shukat. A shukat. A shukat. A shukat. So that means in front of it. That's really all it means. And so this is how you'd say, like, uh, and we'll see uh, some other examples of being like on time, early, and late. Adach. Adach. Itnach. Itnach. Aqa. Aqa. So sequencing in Clinket. Uh, this has a lot to do with like narratives and telling stories. And those stories don't have to always be like the big, this is where we migrated from. But it could be just like, okay, I went here, and then I went here, and then I saw this, and then this type of thing happened. Adach means from that. So 
there's slight differences. The most commonly used one is aqa. Aqa means to follow something. And it's just sort of like saying, and then. Like let's say I'm telling a story. Right? I went to the store, and then I went to the post office. So it's just a, a sequence of things. They're in, they follow each other, but it's not because I went to the store, I was able to go. It's just like this thing, then this thing, then this thing. It's very handy for telling stories because you could just sort of say something. Uh, we went down to the beach the other day. And then, right, so now you can say, like, we saw a killer whale or, or whatever the, the, the next thing you're telling. It's useful in language to know how to do these kind of time jumps. Itnach uh, is like following something. So now we're tying two things together a little bit more closely, right? Sort of like uh, I was looking for my car and I found it and then left, right? And so uh, we're tying them together a little bit more. Uh, yes, on a hook. That's the scene in Dude, Where's My Car? That's the person who's saying, and then. Itnach uh, would be to follow something, right? And so the other thing could be, uh, let's say somebody's walking, and you'd say, Do itchnagu. Follow them. Walk after them, right? And so itch or itnach, sometimes itdach means to follow something. Uh, dach would be uh, from that. And so this one is a little bit tied together with cause and effect sometimes, right? You might say, we migrated away from each other. And from that moment, they're called, we are called Shukach Adi, they're called Khach Adi. And so you talk about two clans that split, and, or one clan that split and became two clans, perhaps. And then, uh, Ye'at uh, would mean something, it happened, right? And so these are all, it's a handy one to use, Ye'at bune, wasa'at bune, what happened? Ye'at uh, yananain, it's happening right now. Um, okay, so moving over, here's how we're on time, late, early. So if you're early, so let's say the meeting's at 2 o'clock. If you're early, you're gao shukat. Gao shukat. Gao shukat. And if you're on time, gao yach. Gao yach. Gao yach. Gao yach. And if you're late, gao itk. Gao itk. Gao itk. Gao itk. So this, you know, so in front of the drum, like the drum, following the drum, or the clock, however you want to think about it. So then we get into some bigger concepts of time. So the things right now, so the yesu is used to talk usually about when a verb is happening. This one is more like generally like, well now, the people of today, or that kind of thing. And it's yidat. 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 Then a little while from now, ziyagen. 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 Tomorrow, sekan. Seqan. Or seqanin. Seqanin. And then in, you know, forever is chutleich. Chutleich. So this one, you get these future verbs or these big hortatives like chutleich, chukal, qasti. Let it always exist. A little while ago, ziyak. 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 So the way you would use these, uh, you might say, "Ziyak away, isachwaach, yidet achtuasagu, yinkachwanigi." Blah blah blah. Right. So a little while ago, I heard you, and now I want to tell you. Right. So this is like sort of time sequencing and responding to things. Ziyagen, ziyagen away. 
a little bit later we're going to go to the store and there's ways to be much more specific about time but then you got to start shifting into verbs the way that Klinkit historically talks about time it's just it's very loose sort of like uh, and you could do some things long time ago very specifically with time but they would have to do with tides and day times and stuff so the other day the other month the other year uh, is used a lot the other ones aren't used that much but in the context of starting to use more and more language they're going to be handy because it's not it has to be really important to mention specifically when it happened otherwise it's just a while ago right. this is long time ago going back to basically and it's it's not a hard line but it seems to go back from when the oldest people alive now were kind of born or it could be personally like it was a long time ago to me uh, right, I might say, talk away. What do you get to hush to? I started to learn quick a long time ago, but maybe 22 years isn't that long to some people. But talk, you ever say, talk. This is back beyond the collective memory of people. It's just, it, it's not like a real hard memory anymore. It just becomes this bigger time immemorial thing all the way back to. Raven and the first people and all that other stuff. So those are, and then uh, this other one, chakak, chakak, It's always, it's a recurring event. So now you're going to get some repetitive verb, right? Chakak yechatna teach. I'm always like that, right? Like someone might say, "Gao it wa you're late." Chakak yechatna teach. I am always like that. <laughs> but maybe you're not. But you know, that's my confession. So then we can look at sort of some other concepts of time. Uh, so there's three ways to say day. It just kind of depends on where you're from. I probably most commonly say uh, this one. Yucky. 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 And that's a day, right? It starts with the dawn. So the dawn uh, is kia. 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 And then this one is kia is generally the dawn. When the daybreak is kind of when the sun first starts appearing, and that's uh, kia. 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 And then the morning is tsutat. Tsutat. And the noon time, sitgausan. Sitgausan. And the evening is khana. Khana. So you've got tsutat et khayi. Tsutat et khayi. That's the way it's like khayi na khua. Maybe you guys, yes, is breakfast, morning food, right? So is food. Sit gao san would be lunch. Khana at chai, dinner. And I guess you could have a tot at chai if you, you know, maybe you have like, but when you get into snacks, it's at chai So this is the plural diminutive. Chai There's a bunch of things that are chai sani. Te is a stone or a rock. Isani are pebbles. Atcha is food. Atcha isani is little foods, snacks. They're cute. They're so cute. Uh, so chana 
is sort of, I would say, loosely, probably thinking of how people thought of it a long time ago, would be about when the sun goes down until time when most people go to bed. And so after bedtime, then you're looking at taught. 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 And then midnight, taught sit gao san. Taught sit gao san. So you see, it's these two words put together. Uh, yeah. So the last night, nistat. Nistat. Yesterday, tatke. Tatke. Uh, two days ago, tatke kya a cut. Tatke kya a cut. And then kya tke. The other day. Uh, and then going forward, sekanen. Sekanen. And the day after tomorrow. Sekanen kya akadin. Sekanen kya akadin. And then collectively, uh, we can get into uh, a week, which is um, Sunday is the name for Sunday, right? Sunday kak. Sunday kak is the week, and that means between the Sundays. So when we start talking about time, some good things for us to, uh, we were doing this for a while, and I think I'll try to remember to get us back in the habit of it. So the first question is, Wasadu wasak yadis. Wasadu wasak yadis. Wasadu wasak yadis. Wasadu wasak yadis. And who can answer that question? I can because last month I was wrong. <laughs> Dissy something. It is something dissy. Something yes, it ends with dissy. I thought it was February for a second. February is seek dissy. Seek dissy. January is a uh, walk dissy. A uh, walk dissy. March is heen tanach kayani dis or dissy. Sorry. Heen tanach. Kayani Dissi. So Heen is water. Tanach is underwater. Kayani is plants. Dis. Kunyaki sa yawahi ya dis. I'm going to say, uh, oops. Oh, hold on. Let me fix. Let me fix two things. I'm going to say so because it just sounds better. And then I'm going to say blank. Whoops. And that would be this month is called. Whoa. Sorry. Kunyaki so we yawahi ya dis. Kunyaki so we yawahi ya dis. Play do shu yaki yawahi ya dis. Play do shu yaki yawahi ya dis. Yaki. So we see it right here. Heen tanach kayani dis. Oops. And then we get Sunday. And then this is where it gets a little tricky. Because sometimes when we start talking about, we start using time and we start say we want to speak clinky every day, all day, all the time. So one of the things we have to sort of differentiate is when we're talking about the number of days that might pass and the names of these days. So when we go from Monday through Friday, it's really one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. Kaikigi, dehigi, naskigi, dakunyagi, kijinyagi. Saturday is Sunday Katsuku, which is the adolescent Sunday. And then Sunday comes from the word Sunday. 
So now these are the things that we can talk about. So uh, Thursday we'll do a few other things with this time stuff like, uh, I don't think I have it in this one. Yeah, we'll do that one later. But you could do things like uh, in, set in like three days from now, four days ago, four, four days, three days. You know, the time gets really complicated in terms of how we use it. We don't think about it because we just sort of can do it all the time. But once we start learning how to do so in another language, uh, Tanakh is along the bottom of the water. So talk is usually how we, you know, heen talk means to be underwater. Tanakh means to be along the bottom of the water. So when you say heen tanakh kayani, the plants that are underneath the water because they're, they go along underneath the water. Okay. But now let's talk a little bit. Oops. What is this one doing? So when we look up a verb, uh, we got to get used to seeing all the information that we're presented with, and then figuring out what to do with that information. Because uh, this was first developed by Jeff Lear, and was later. Uh, worked on and improved tremendously by Carrie Eggleston. And then James Crippen and Seth Cable and I made a couple of other tweaks to this. And that's trying to say, okay, we can compact a whole bunch of information in here in a particular verb to give to folks so that they could use it. And so there's, for Clinkit, there's a whole bunch of information you need to remember. Some of this stuff is stuff that you don't need to necessarily memorize. You know that there's another type of coup so if we go to the verb dictionary and we look up ku as a verb root, we see there's one which is to spit out liquid after holding it in your mouth for a while. And then there's one to know something. right? So there's two different types of verb roots. And they, they sound the same, but they're unrelated. I like how specific <laughs> verb roots are. That's my fa one of my favorite things about Clinket, how specific things it's are. It's so fun. Like, how do you say spit? It's like, are you holding that in your mouth for a little while? Right? It's, it's just like, yeah, just the level. You're like, yeah, sure, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, of course there's seven ways to say that, right? And so and it's just something, it's just something to have fun with, right? It's so, but it's fun to see the logic of a language, right? That it's that important to sort of, Categorize that kind of stuff. I wonder why they needed to be that specific, though. Maybe for medicine. It could oh, be, maybe. right? Or um, mouthwash. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah. It could be medicinal. Could be. Well, if we go back, there were a lot of paints and stuff oh, that you yeah. you chewed it up, yeah. right? And then you would spit it, and so that's a different type of, and even like. What it tells you is how are you going to do that thing? Because in English, you don't really differentiate. You don't. You just say, hey, take this over there. But in Klingit, once you say, take it over there, you already know how you're going to carry it. Which is weird, because usually you just you figure that stuff out, right? Yeah. Because if you say, hey, take this pail of water, and if they just grab it any old way, then it just spills, right? OK. So unpacking the, type, the amount of information that's presented to you. Uh, we're going to start with transitivity. So there's, there's two different things that are being shown to us here. And it's kind of double reinforcement, because we want to know, is there an object? Is there a subject? Because there's two things to remember. Is they're listed here as capital letters, capital O, capital S. If you don't see it, you cannot put it in there. And if you see it, you cannot take it out of there. Those, those are two important concepts. So that tra transitivity just means, is there an object? Is there a subject? Uh, Michael D'Angeli was teaching uh, Samelgech. She said, I think I figured it out. I was talking about transitivity, and they weren't getting it. And I was like, well, transitivity is baby making. Intransitivity is just playing around with yourself. So I was like, well, OK, that, that works. So it's not always the case. And so, but basically, transitive means the verb has both, object and subject. 
right? So that means transitive. There's two types of intransitive in clinking. So when we say object intransitive, that means there's only an object. Khat yak a. I am good. Khat yak a. You made me better. Subject intransitive means there's only a subject, there's not an object. Impersonal means there's neither of them. You don't have to remember those terms, but you just have to remember when you're looking at the verb theme, it tells you whether there's an object or subject. And if there is, they cannot go away. And if there isn't, you cannot add them. Right? The next thing to know is the classifier. The verb theme will tell you the classifier group. And the group is going to be 0, S, L, or SH. It will also tell you if it's plus D. So for example, if this was the fishing one, where it was Z, that would say D plus S. That means that, that it has to be plus D. And there's some verbs that they have to be. Right? And you'll, just, you'll get to know them a little bit more of what that means and what they do. You'll get to know a little bit more of what the classifier is and what that does. But it tells you right there, and that means you're looking on this S group, and so this is going to be Khwesiku plus I, Kesh Khwesaku minus I. It's either going to be an I or an A, right? Or plus I minus I, right? Ku, this is the verb root. This is the one, this is the part that contains most of the meaning, right? So this is to know or to learn facts. The letter H tells you that tells you a type of stem variation. There's two things that there, well, there's three things that will determine what the ver what the stem is going to be. It's going to be short and high. It's going to be long and high, or it's going to be long and low. The things that determine that is the stem variation type, the conjugation type, and the verb mode. There's, a, there's three different things that interact there, so we usually do that, that one last. I just say for now, look at it and remember. Just look at it and remember. Okay, this one's high, it'll stay high. This one's long, it'll stay long. But it is, it is predictable. Uh, if there's a number up there, that means that there's a homonym, there's another coup, which we saw was to spit things out after holding them in your mouth for a little while. Now there's a conjugation type, and we've, we maybe have touched on this, but not a whole lot. But now it's time to start opening the box of wisdom a little bit farther. So every verb has a conjugation type, and this doesn't change. The conjugation type generally refers to what type of action it is. A zero conjugation means that it hits some achievable goal, or it hits some stopping level. Na means it's just kind of an ongoing thing. Ga has to do with upward type of things, and ka has to do with downward type of things. This is going to, there's going to be some things that you see that's important to remember with these four types of things. And so this is why we say su ye ik kwasatin. I will see you later. The ye part is because it's qa, conjugation. But we say ke kwak e, it's gonna get better. That's ke because it's ga, conjugation. The way it always reveals itself is in the command forms. So here's a zero, like if you're sitting there and you're not eating your delicious food, I might say, Ha, which is a command form, eat it. If it's bedtime, I might say, nata. nata. And then, so that's revealing the conjugation type. If I want you to stand up, I might say, gidan, which is a contraction of ga, da, han. So that's upwards. If I want you to sit down, I'll say, kanu. Ka, 
and nuke, right? And so it's another chunk of information that you're ready to chew on, hold it in your mouth for a while, and spit it out. <laughs> there is types of verbs. Uh, so really the type of verb, uh, there's act, event, state, motion, position. And, and so looking at that, there's a couple things that it's going to give you important information for. The event really means there cannot be an imperfective. Because an event, it's either, it's either that way or it's not that way. And so you have to look at the perfective. That's why we say, khwaseku, I know it. But you can't say, you know, but there's other ones that can be something that's happening sort of right now. But in Clinket, there's quite a few verbs that you can talk about. Has it happened? In this process of having it happened. Right? There's this, it, it goes into this event sort of stage. Act is for usually, usually there's an object in the subject. Somebody's doing something to somebody. State is for something to be a certain way. Motion verbs are for things to move. And motion verbs are, they're really interesting in Clinket. And we'll, we'll look at them later. Position verbs, there's not very many of them. They usually only appear in one or two different modes. To be that way or to not be that way. I'm sitting. I'm not sitting. And then, and that's it. That's, so that's all the information. Then down here you get uh, the definition. And usually this is capitalized. For S to know, be acquainted with, make known, uh, O. Uh, for S to learn, O. Right? So I could say, I know you. You know me. We know each other. Right? And so these are, these are just some things to think about as far as what type of information is being given to you in a verb. Are you okay with that? Okay. Now let's go back to some more combinations. Right, so putting these things together, and, and so uh, we're at this stage where we're doing a lot of this stuff. Trying to just get a little, few more phrases and verbs by looking at that little readings. Continuing to, to drive home a couple new concepts or concepts that we just kind of brushed over earlier. And then getting in here and manipulating these verbs. So we could just say, uh, in this case, I heard uh, a person. And so there's, there's two different ways to hear people. Like I could say, that means I heard you. But it's like I heard you rattling around or making noise. But if I say, I heard your voice. You're talking, you're singing. Um, so Thursday, I'll start with a story uh, that I heard Clarence Jackson tell. Well, I'll do my best to tell it to you. And it's related to this verb. Uh, and then we'll, I think it's six minutes, but let's try and get through maybe one page of this and then we'll talk about what we want to do on Thursday. Or maybe we should do that now. Dasai to What do you guys want? Ideas for Thursday? Ideas for Thursday. Okay. What do you guys want to talk about? I should give you some things to come back and report on the thing. So we're going to try and stay in the language as much as possible on Thursday. Uh, yeah, getting full. Okay. Okay. Akshan Yanik would usually be like a headache. Or you can always say which is I'm full and that could be like you know I'm full I'm full of language I'm full I, I've, I'm hit my max point uh, if, if you were to say that at like 7 o'clock I might just say too bad but usually I'll try and switch 
topics or because the the grammar stuff gets really intense. I know it's there's tons of concepts, there's tons of things, and you really get to the underlying functions of the language. Um, so let's just talk a little bit and, and game plan for Thursday. So a while ago we did some things where uh, I think last Thursday I did a lot of talking and because I had this sort of somewhat clan migrations. That's really fun for me. I might do some more of that. I can tell you guys this sort of short story. Uh, daily tasks. Yeah, why don't you guys find some ways to talk about things that you do on a daily basis. And so, for example, uh, maybe I need to say, uh, I made coffee this morning. Uh, or maybe I cooked uh, bacon, or I cooked oatmeal, or whatever. Uh, I need to do my laundry, right? I mean, this is just day-to-day -day stuff. Figure out some things that you can say and just sort of share with us. And then maybe figure out some things, if there's things you would like to say, we could share those things. Uh, we'll have some times when we're in English. Yeah, take out the trash. So there's going to be some command forms as well, right? And so, wash the dishes. Um, pick up your socks. And so there, there might be some things that, you know, uh, we need to learn how to say to just uh, maybe phrases to use with children. So we've got a book, Hayat uh, Yes, I think it's called for our children. So maybe we'll start with a story. I'll start. We'll just start going through some of these phrases. We don't have to use English because we can read the English, and we'll just have it as a lesson. Uh, so I'll start with a story. You guys give me some phrases that you're able to find or put together that are daily use types of things. And then we'll start reading through this Hayat uh, Yis for our children handbook. Uh, so just, the idea was we wanted to develop a phrase book. Um, and the vision was eventually you'd have these little flip books. And one is phrases for the kitchen. So you just leave it in the kitchen. And one is phrases for the living room. And you just leave it in the living room. So that you can sort of look up how to say some of these things that you might uh, might want to learn how to say. And then there's, there's a couple other little books and stuff that, that I've got that might be fun to examine. So we'll try to do uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow tenses. Yeah, and so we'll look at some of these phrases and talk about how to do these. Like, um, I'm making coffee. I made coffee. I'm going to make coffee. So we might try and take some of these core phrases that we want to use all the time and be able to talk about them in terms of yesterday, right now, and tomorrow. We'll just sort of start with those types of things. Because once you've got those, it, doesn't, it could be yesterday all the way back until forever. And same with going forward. Okay. Any other... Thoughts or ideas? If I were referring to Thursday today, would I say Ziyagen or Dakhun Sunday? Oh, yeah. So usually, like, if you're going to say, um, I'll see you on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So what we've got here is we've got Su Ye Ik. Plus a team. So here's the here's the phrase. So now to add the time reference to it, you're gonna have some time and you're gonna put the X on there, right? So this is how we'll know. It's not like for four day four days, what's with the four days? So this one means at that time. So I could say uh for just a weird kind of example, and we could just copy and paste this. I will see you in the winter. Talk. So yeah, I'll see you again in the winter. Right, the again part. Um, oops. And then we could say. Dog 
but the on there tells us it's a reference to that at that time, right? And then we could say, uh, I don't want to get too, I'm just going to keep making it more complicated. Because then we could say, I'll see you two days from now, I'll see you a week from now. And we could do that kind of stuff, but we won't do that quite yet. We're probably, we're probably at the good enough phase. Um,